Welcome. My name is Melissa Hoof, and I'm an instrumentation technologist here at the Center for Dairy Research. Today, I'm going to take you on a virtual pilot plant tour and review some of the capabilities that we as a Center for Dairy Research has for the production of dairy ingredients and to review equipment used in the production of these ingredients. During this presentation, we will cover the following dairy processes. We will review pasteurization, homogenization, separation, and concentration. All of these are used in the production of dairy ingredients. As you can see, we can take full cream milk and use different processes to create different endpoints, such as skim milk powder and milk protein concentrate powder. Pasteurization is the first step in the creation of all dairy ingredients. Pasteurization is the process of heating every particle of milk or milk product. This is legally required for majority of dairy products, excluding raw milk cheeses. During pasteurization, we eliminate pathogens. The act of pasteurization is based on time and temperature and can be determined by products pH, total solids, or composition. In regards to pasteurization, there are multiple heat treatments that can be done. We could use batch pasteurization, high temperature short time, ultra pasteurization, ultra high temp, or sterilization in a container. As you can see, the temperature and time varies between these heat treatment methods. As an increase in temperature, you will have an increase in the shelf life of the product. The first method of pasteurization we're going to cover is batch pasteurization. This is very common in small dairy operations, and a batch pasteurizer consists of a tank, a heating element, and a time and temperature recording device. As you can see, there are airspace thermometers to make sure that every particle of milk is pasteurized per the legal requirements. The next method of pasteurization we're going to cover is high temperature short time or HTST pasteurization. This is the most common in the dairy industry and the components of this pasteurizer include a heat exchanger, holding tubes, timing pump, time and temperature recording device. From the diagram on the right of the screen, you can see how raw milk flows through the heat exchange system into the holding tubes and comes out as pasteurized milk. You can see where water is heated to heat the milk and how product is cooled prior to use. There is also a video in the video section of this short course where you can watch actual pasteurization occur in a virtual model. Another very common aspect of dairy ingredient production is separation. The most common method of separation is centrifugation this is where we use centrifugal force to separate the cream from the skim milk. As you can see on the diagram to the right of the screen, you input whole milk into the separation system and you get cream and skim milk. This can be done either warm at 122 degrees Fahrenheit or cold, which is less than 45 degrees Fahrenheit. There are many different sizes of separators that can be used in the dairy industry. You can use a bench top model, which is about 100 liters per hour, or you can go up to a large scale production separator, which can do approximately 10,000 liters an hour. On the diagram to the left, you can see how the discs of the separator rotate and how it separates the fluid. The whole milk comes in through the center, goes up through to the rotating discs, and then you get your separation of skim milk and milk fat, or the cream, and any solid debris, like somatic cells, will get thrown to the sides in the solid material. CDR will have a GEA warm milk separator and a GAA raw milk processing area in the new CDR production pilot plant. Warm milk separation increases processing capability as more milk can flow as product is less viscous. If you go to the equipment video section of this short course, you will be able to see how a separator works. 
Another process in dairy ingredient production is homogenization. In layman's terms, homogenization is the busting up of large fat globules into smaller fat globules. This is very commonly used in the production of fluid milk to prevent creaming, which is the separation of the fat from the milk. This is also very common in a few cheese making varieties, such as the production of blue cheese. Homogenization is the breaking up of fat globules with pressure. In the new raw milk processing area, we will have a GA homogenizer. As you can see, with the act of homogenization, the fat globules decrease in size and get coated with more proteins. There are two stages in homogenization, the first step and the second step. The first stage is under high pressure and the second stage is under low pressure. The, two, the drop in pressure is what causes the fat globules to break apart. Homogenization is important because it prevents creaming off or the separation of fat from the milk. As you can see, the fat globules in raw milk are very inconsistent in size. Over time, as product is cooled and sits, the cream clumps together and rises to the top. The act of homogenization disperses the fat globules and makes them into smaller particles, which are easier to be distributed through the milk. The next topic we will cover is membrane filtration. Membrane filtration is pressure-driven separation. We can separate milk components by molecule size. This is done by putting high pressure on a solution and forcing smaller molecules through the membrane pores. In the dairy industry, there are four very common membrane filtration methods, microfiltration, ultrafiltration, nanofiltration, and reverse osmosis. As you can see, with the different filtration methods, you retain different molecules. Our robe retains everything but water. Nanofiltration retains all sugars, fats, and proteins. Ultrafiltration retains all fat and protein. And microfiltration retains all casein and fat. The two most common types of membranes are spiral round, polymeric, and ceramic. The polymeric membranes are very commonly used in the dairy industry for all membrane filtration applications from reverse osmosis to ultrafiltration and microfiltration. Ceramic is not very commonly used in the United States, but is very good for applications of viscous products. As stated earlier, membrane filtration uses pressure to separate milk components. Feed is the initial material, which could be milk or whey. This is fed into the system and concentrated via membrane filtration. The concentrate is a retentate and retains the product that we want. Permeate, which is the molecule that is pushed across the membrane, may also be saved or discarded. At the Center for Dairy Research, we have the capability of using multiple sizes of filtration. We can do MF, UF, NF, and RO with all of these pieces of equipment. In some of the pictures, you can see how our batch loops are set up with a batch tank that goes through the membrane filtration system. If you also refer to the equipment video section, of this short course, you will be able to watch videos on the internal workings of a membrane filtration system. Evaporation is another aspect of dairy processing that is important in the production of dairy ingredients. Evaporation is the process of using vacuum to remove water from products. This can be used to create concentrated products such as milk, whey, and permeate, or can be used to concentrate feeds for spray drying. Temperatures can be less than boiling because vacuum lowers the boiling point of milk. 
The most common type of evaporation used in the dairy industry is falling film evaporation. This is where product falls on a tube in which it is heated from the outside. The heated product is then put into a vacuum chamber where vacuum is pulled and the product is concentrated. This can be done in a batch method or with flow through concentration. In the, final, in the middle of this screen, you will see our pilot plant production evaporation skid. This is a batch method for evaporation and gives us the ability to process a wide range of products at high and low temperatures. If you refer to the product equipment video section of this short course, you will see a couple evaporation videos on common evaporation methods in the dairy industry. Spray drying is the final method of processing that we will cover in this presentation. Spray drying is used to remove water from dairy products. This process is done by heating the air using an atomizer to create small droplets of products. We mix the hot air and the atomized products to dry the product and then we separate the powder from the drying air. In the picture on the right is a very simplistic drawing of how a spray dryer works. The feed enters through the top of the dryer where the gas or air is pushed into the drying chamber to dry the atomized product. The product is then pulled into a cyclone which separates the powder from the air. There are two types of spray dryers used in the dairy industry, single stage and multi-stage. A single stage dryer is where a single chamber is used to dry the product and create the powder. A multi-stage dryer is where there is a primary drying chamber, but then there are multiple chambers to dry the product after the initial stage. With spray drying, you can use different types of heating. You could use a direct flame to heat the air for drying, as shown in the multi-stage dryer picture on the right, or you could use an indirect heating method as described on the spray drying diagram on the left. At the CDR, we have two pilot scale spray dryers. We have an APV single stage pilot dryer, which you can see on the left is only about eight feet tall. We also have a new Cicadania multi-stage pilot dryer, which you can see on the right. This dryer is 30 feet tall and has a fluid bed, which you can see in the picture on in the middle. And there's also an explosion area, which you can see is that large apparatus sticking out of the spray dryer chamber on the right picture. To view a spray drying process, you can go to the equipment video section of this short course. We can use the processes that we discussed previously in this presentation to create an array of dairy powders. Skim milk powder can be created with a combination of separation, evaporation, and spray drying. Sweet whey powder can be created with ultrafiltration, evaporation, and spray drying. MPC, milk protein concentrate, WPC, whey tea protein concentrate, and WPI, whey protein isolate, can be created with a process of filtration, dye filtration, which is adding water to flush out lactose, evaporation, and spray drying. All of these power powders are very common in the dairy industry. As we were unable to see the processes in an actual pilot plant, you can go to the equipment video section of this short course to see an example of how dairy powders are made. If you have any questions on the content of this presentation, please feel free to reach out to any of us at the Center for Dairy Research. I would like to thank you for listening to this presentation and to thank our sponsors, Wisconsin and U.S. Dairy Farm Families, 
Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin, the National Dairy Council, CDR Industry Team, and WCMA. Thank you.